What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of My Other Passion. I'm Ernest Baker, Editor-in-Chief of Front Office Sports. And you know how we do. New guests every week, new conversation, this time with the CEO of Celsius. You've probably seen their energy drink around, maybe at your gym, maybe at your local convenience store. PepsiCo just invested $550 million in this company. I think they have like percent of it now so of course we talked about that we talked about competing with red bull and monster and you know why john thinks they can get to the number one spot in the energy market so let's go ahead and get into it we're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors over at oracle netsuite and then we'll be right back 2000 2008 2022 when it comes to the economy those are some scary years first you got the dot-com crash and the housing crash and whatever roller coaster we're going through right now One thing is certain, though, it's a dangerous time to not know your numbers, but over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility, control over your finances, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, everything you need to manage risks and get reliable forecasts right there, right in one place. So how do you prepare for uncertain times? NetSuite. It's going to help you identify rising costs automate business processes, and easily see where to save money so you can improve those margins. 93% of customers say they improve their visibility and control when they upgrade to NetSuite. So what are you waiting for? Right now, you're in luck because NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. All you got to do is head to netsuite.com slash myotherpassion. Again, netsuite.com slash myotherpassion. Sign up, check it out, and see just how much you can improve your business. John, what is up? CEO of Celsius, the hottest new drink. I don't want to make it sound like a commercial, but I mean, y'all, y'all are killing it right now. I'm not. I saw that 550 million Pepsi Co. through your way. What is going on? Oh man, Ernest, glad to be here. A lot going on. A lot going on here. It's exciting. Um, you know, we're we're making it and uh, making it all happen here. Providing essential energy. It's uh, you know, it's co- brands coming a long way. So we've been in you know here over ten years and really just now getting national distribution in a big way with the Pepsi partnership, as you mentioned, five hundred and fifty million. They're now an eight uh, percent shareholder in the business, and uh, just a really exciting time for the company and. We're growing leaps and bounds, adding new employees and uh, new distribution all over. So you're finding us in more places than ever before. Why don't we get right into that? We covered that on Front Office Sports when it happened. I believe it was like August when that got announced, uh, the PepsiCo investment, which blows my mind because I feel like we posted that story on the site like uh, recently, you know, but we are about to be in 2023. Um, That just... That's how life is moving these days. But what is it like to get an investment like that? Like we see these big headlines everywhere and I've done some research and I understand that like a big part of this is, is elevating your distribution, but also like a lot of the people listening, a lot of people in general, like we have these big dreams. We start a company, you know, we all want to have a point where a conglomerate like PepsiCo sees the potential in us and, and tosses us half a billion dollars. Can you clarify what that's actually like? Like, you know, I imagine that it's probably not even you get tossed money. I mean, it's like, what's the perception and what's the reality? I know it feels good, John, but like, what's the truth of getting an investment like that? And how does the company move the next day? What does everyone do when they show up to work the next day? Break it down for us. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Listen, it's uh, there's a major milestones we've made as a company, and I've been with the brand now over ten years. This is a, a really a turnaround story uh, for the company. The company, the brand's over been over twelve years uh, in the making, and um, you know it's quite it's quite interesting on the journey. We've started this brand from really from the scratch of the foundation, building up in gyms and health clubs, and really is somewhat of a very niche brand. And, you know, with the strength of health and wellness and the seven essential vitamins and the better for you movement and people really are looking for alternatives and energy and they want their energy drinks to do more for them, which Celsius delivers on. You know, we've we've been working at this and telling people there's a better energy drink out there and it's Celsius. And, you know, to get qualified, as you mentioned, with Pepsi and, you know, the the, yes, they did invest five hundred and fifty million dollars into the company. They're an eight percent holder. Um, You know, it's a it's a great moment. There's a a lot of employees here that are extremely excited and there's a lot of contributors along the journey and just since i've been here in 10 years that have been critical to each step along the way 
But to be honest with you, we come in the next day, um, you know, the bar is just raised. So, I, you know, it's very similar from the first day when I started here. It's, uh, you know, you're trying to survive. There's a huge competition. The category is rapidly growing. You know, you're going against the largest CPG brands in the world. There's a lot of brands coming in the category for the first time. Tons of competition. We are now the third largest energy drink brand in the category in the U.S., but that, you know, is number three. It's a major accomplishment, but that's a far away from number two. And there's a lot of other competition, you know, coming after us. So um, I don't know if it really changes for our mindset here. You know, it gives us additional capital, additional resources, which is great. And that that's really going to help us really see the maximum potential that we have with the brand. Uh, but it's still the same day when I started. We're still starting, starting to, you know, fighting to survive each and every day and build this brand one by one and bring more consumers in. Yeah, that's the reality of these deals that I that I love to hear about. Huge accomplishment, great moment, but I think more people should realize that those type of opportunities just create more work. Like, you know, there's a famous saying, hard work begets more more work, more opportunities. And, you know, I think about that a lot with the business coverage that we do at FOS and, you know, love being able to sit down with someone right after a deal like that goes down and you know, understand what it's really about. So with that said, what is the goal for Celsius from a business standpoint? Like, you know, what are you all looking like? Um, I've seen that your stock has really been doing super well over, you know, the past few weeks or few months. I'm sure the deal sort of energized that. But what are the stakes for you all? Like, you're number three. You're not complacent you may be happy in some ways but like i know it's it, you don't really get to come in and celebrate every day you get to say oh cool now now how do i get to this number how do i you know hit these <laughs> goals what are some of those like where do you want to be from a revenue standpoint um from a market penetration standpoint in a year in five years like are you are you do you think you could take out red bull you think you could take out What's never, what is it? Red Bull and Monster are one and two, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we all, we all know that. So is it like you come in the office and there's a world, you're Apple in the eighties saying we can beat IBM, we can beat windows. And, uh, and that's what you're working toward. I, I, I want to hear the behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to, right. You got to energize the teams. We have new individuals. We've doubled the size of this organization. It's not tripled it in the last really year and a half. I mean, passionate team members. We're all about, we want to be number one. That's what we're here for. We're not here to be number two. Uh, we feel we have a brand that can be number one and we're focused on that every day. I mean, we, uh, we're not complacent at number, number three. None of us came here for that. We got a really strong team uh, and working towards strategies to get there. Um, if you look at some of you know, our Q3 results, we put up great numbers. And if you look at, you know, where we are on Amazon, we're the number two energy drink brand there on uh, the latest data. And, you know, it shows you given the same opportunity in shelf placement with consumers availability, Celsius compete with the top selling brands in the category. So, you know, we feel we have the potential, we're really excited about that. We're putting plans in place and really Pepsi allows us the opportunity to see how high a high is with Celsius. And, you know, historically, the brand has really not played in traditional energy drink, uh, the en traditional energy drink category. Our lower availability has been in convenience where 70 percent of energy drinks are sold and they're sold cold and immediate impulse. And we've been working and gaining more distribution through 7-Eleven and Circle K and Speedways. But now with Pepsi, that's going to open us up to a ton of independence, over 150,000 independents in the U.S., also opens us up to food service where we see great opportunity, college campuses, which that incorporates. So lots of opportunities as we go through and see where this, how high high is. We're gonna have the availability. The question is, can we drive this brand? How far can we drive this brand? And that's what gets us excited. That's why we wake up every day. Um, and that's what this un investment unlocks. And uh, our team is passionate uh, and really excited about the future and also international. Because Pepsi's in 127 markets, this opens us up and really unlocks the opportunity for international opportunities. And the same health and wellness trends that are we're capitalizing on in Celsius today in the U.S. are global trends. Everyone wants better for you. 
They don't want to sacrifice flavor. We deliver on seven essential vitamins. We don't sacrifice on flavor. We win hands down. We got some really great flavor. If you look behind me, we got some of our vibe lines that are. I'm going to ask what uh, what is what is your favorite flavor? If you have, I'm sure it's like picking children, but yeah, no, we got great flavors. We got like 20 different. Flavors. I know, but what's your what's your one that you that you pick up the most on like a given week? Yeah, orange. I'm a big fan of orange. The uh, one behind you right now. That's my that's my jam. The pe- I just disappeared, but the peach vibe. Peach, peach vibe's great. This Arctic berry uh, that we came out, Arctic vibe, where there's a frozen berry. That's yeah, I fruit. saw that one. I mean, uh, like Arctic berry. I love like cold branded stuff. You know, I always love like Gatorade Frost and and just something about it makes it seem like it's going to be like super refreshing. Um, berry is not my favorite. It's it's you know it hit a little bit different than I think like peach mango or, or green tea or some yeah. of those. But look, everybody has their preferences. One really Absolutely. granular market thing that I wanted to ask, and it's really interesting because I'm asking the CEO this, but these are seemingly like so much further down um, when it comes to like logistics and operations. So two things. One at my gym, there are. There's been a couple of times where there's been people there. They just have a cooler full of Celsius and they're like, yo, what's up? You want one? Um, now the gym stocks it. But just like that's that's that guerrilla marketing street team, hard kind of grunt work. And I wonder like what how that's going like what what in your position is the perspective on that. I know I can go talk to like a CMO or certain VP or whatever, but are you even really in touch with those type of movements? And then also I'm curious because I can look, look, it's an objective thing. We can look at the stock. We can look at the earnings reports and see that like sales are really up year over year revenues up. Like you all are doing super well. So I'm wondering like, what is your um, philosophy on, on sales in terms of like, when I go in my Ralph's up the street in Los Angeles, I always see like a deal, like a, you know, two for this, three for this, or, you know, 50, buy one, get one. It's just like those marketing things, whether it's a gorilla in the gym, whether it's some of your like pricing strategies at grocery stores and convenience. Can you tell me a bit about those? Just because I see that every day yeah. um, between two of my most traffic locations. So I got to ask you personally. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, cans and hands, right? We're a great beverage. We taste great. You got a great experience. No crash, no jitters. Um, you know, win hands down on flavor. So cans and hands, we are huge on cans and hands. We have an essential vibe tour we launched where we're going coast to coast at different concerts, handing out cans, and we have cool activation sites as well. Uh, we have a live fit tour. We're doing 5Ks and outdoor activities along the way. And then to your point, at the uh, we have our gorilla sampling team going around. We do Monday gym drops, a variety of different things out there. So uh, cans and hands are key. Um, and then when you look at you know events, it's it, and you, you talked about some of the promotional strategies. You got to have your marketing strategies, uh, top line, you know, and then also really hitting consumers. We're all creatures of habit. We go really to the, you know the same path just about every day. The same gym, the same uh, gas station, grocery store. You really got to get into a consumer's daily life and. You might activate them at the gym. You got to get their 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 notice when they go into a retailer. So that's where your pricing promotional strategies come in at the retailer. When you're looking at those, you know, buy gets dollar, you know, deals off, and you need to do those in order to get off shelf placement. So the key is on every retailer, you want to get like three points of disruption in a given retailer. So that's what we work on, and those pricing promotional strategies allow us to really get off shelf uh, within the given retailers. And yeah, that's that's in like the produce section of my grocery store. It's like a big Celsius rack, like next to the bananas. <laughs> That'll work. We need three. We want to be on shelf. We want to be cold, uh, and then we want a third placement anywhere in the retailer. So it's multiple points of disruption trying to get the consumer to notice uh, and hopefully pick one up. So with PepsiCo, again, major move, milestone for 2022, um, do we see a future where you all are getting acquired? Do you want that? Like, I think a good parallel is what just happened with Body Armor and Coca-Cola, right? They invested a bit. Now they've taken the whole company over. John, are you trying to are you trying to get that that nice cash out? We got acquired type of, you know, 
fairy tale ending for this or or do you have a different perspective on how it should go and you really just want that support you really just want that partnership from you know a company like pepsi well i mean if you look at the relationship with monster and coke right the uh, monster continues to coexist as a separate entity and leverages coke's uh, supply chain and distribution for global availability so i think there's a variety of different opportunities as this plays out um, you know, right now they're an eight percent holder. We're, as you mentioned, we're a public company. We're for sale every day of the week. Um, you know, I am. Uh, you know, I, I'm a. I'm an operator here. I'm not the original founder of the of the company. So, listen, I'm working uh, day in day night. We're looking to build this brand as, you know, to be number one and um, you know and and to build a really solid company and and really drive shareholder value. So, that's where it's at and. Um, you know, we'll see how everything turns out. But our focus right now is really building the brand, driving it as, as far as we can and, and on a global basis. Yeah, you just like put your head down and work hard. And then one day uh, Pepsi's like, here's $10 billion and <laughs> your life changes. But I know it's a public company, so I'm not going to try to get you to, to crack here. Um, but I I want to know how did you get to CEO? Like you're a finance, you're you're an accounting guy. My dad's a certified public accountant as well. I saw your license down in Florida. Um, so how does the numbers guy go to who's sitting in front of me right now? Who's clearly like you're on your CEO swag now. It's like it's different because I'm I'm thinking you know a lot of times CFOs. Maybe it's a little like stereotypical, but but also just a lot of times they're like they're quieter dudes. You know what I mean? They're there. They're they're doing the audits. They're getting the, they're handling the finances. Um, but I see you. It seems like you've adapted. And I don't know how you were 10 years ago or at the beginning of the company. You might have been the coolest, loudest CFO ever. But it seems like there's like a different energy where you are like. I'm trying to lead this vision. I'm trying to like create what this company is to where the billions are just rolling in. So like, what was that transition like for you? Do you find yourself where you're really good with understanding the numbers because you spent so much time in that position? Just curious about that whole career arc for you. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, listen, I, I've been always told I'm not your typical accountant, I guess has been, uh, I've been told by, you know, through my careers, I was in B2B publishing for a while. I spent over eight years at Eckerd's at store level as a store manager um, and, uh, you know, uh, working on rehabilitating underperforming stores. And, um, uh, you know, I worked at a biotech company as a uh, corporate controller, um, working with that company to get them to uplist the NASDAQ. And I joined Celsius as the CFO. I uh, had a good uh, an opportunity to come over and I followed really one of my mentors along the way who was the came over as the initial uh, CEO of the turnaround. Uh, he convinced me to come in and join him, and I was really collaborating with him. We worked hand in hand, uh, always been involved with marketing operation efficiencies and strategies and trying to drive and educate uh, really our sales and marketing teams and operational teams about the numbers. I mean, a lot of times it's a foreign language and, you know, the numbers can be manipulated to what is uh, the ultimate goal is achieved and, and, and seen, especially on data analytics and um, you know, so I think it's important to really have a solid base on the financials and to drive that through. I mean, profitability is key and really understanding how sales are flowing, how to optimize processes. Is there ROI on your investments in your marketing initiatives? What are we tracking? What are we truly trying to get out of this to drive back to the P&L, back to the balance sheet? And um, so I've always been really integrally involved in a variety of different processes and putting in controls and uh, trying to help the team members out. So it's still the same thing we do today as we continue to move forward. And um, uh, Jerry David was the prior CEO of Celsius. He wound up retiring in 2017. And um, I had the opportunity uh, that while they were looking for an alternative, I had about a year and a half doing dual role uh, in the position as CEO, CFO. And um, they had the opportunity, they, they gave me a chance. So uh, I've been here and continue to kick and butt and uh, grow in the team. And um, you know, it's a great opportunity and I went for it. I'm not going to, you know, we're going to continue to fight and then we're going to go, uh, see how far this thing can go. What are some of like the best or most inspiring stories that you've seen, you know, in your tenure? I know you, you've been with a company for like a decade plus, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. so whether it's like, I always love when, when people have like random celebrity stories, you know, I, 
we name dropping can be obnoxious, but in these situations, sometimes it's just cool to be like, yeah, like for instance, a lot of, a lot of the people that we work with just, just talked to uh, the CEO of whoop and he was Patrick Mahomes as an investor and also uses the product and like is wearing it in the Super Bowl and stuff. So it was just cool to hear like a firsthand account about working with that guy on a personal and a business level. And, you know, what's that been like for you? Uh, if there's any cool investors or, or just like cool people using the product that you've had, you know, interactions with, um, but also just like, like holistically big picture, like things that you've learned about running a business, about people, about life from this position yeah. that you've spent like the past, you know, more than 10 years dedicated to. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a pretty, just recently, I mean, we've, we've over the last really about two years now, we partnered, uh, one of our partners is uh, Dustin Poyer and, uh, he's a big UFC fighter. And I was, uh, I don't know if anyone's aware, but, uh, you know, out there he's, he's actually beat Conor McGregor twice now. So, uh, you know, a really interesting, uh, individual in the octagon, but, uh, you know, he'll come into the office and hang out just a regular dude and just a great individual all the way around. So we've met, I've met some phenomenal people uh, through the career. I think, you know, when you look back over the 10 years, probably the most important thing is being able to really work with a variety of different personalities. Uh, I've been, you know, over the 10 years dealt with a lot of different personalities. I think I go back, I probably wish I would have uh, taken more psychology classes, uh, you know, through the journey. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's really important to be able to motivate people and understand and, you know, give people a voice. Um, I think that's really important. We do a lot of collaboration here cross-functionally, um, just on flavor innovation. I mean, you name it, try to make sure everyone has a piece and, a, and an input on every step we make and every step we go forward. And I'm the first one here to uh, really jump in and help out any way I can and, and, and through the business. And I'm extremely hands-on. I've earned the respect for the company and the, and the, the employees. And I think that's really important. you got to earn your respect as a manager, as a, a mentor. Um, and, uh, and, and that's what's going to make a team truly operate at peak performance uh, is having that, that full collaboration. I actually had a note down here to ask you how hands-on you are. Like, I love a CEO who, and I personally believe, like, as, like, EIC of FOS or whatever, I don't really, like, believe in titles anyway. Like, they're cool. It's a cool, like, marker for external purposes and, like, some sense of structure. But, like, really, like, you're in the company, so you're in it. And you should be, I, be I believe, the CEO and and a first year entry level should have some type of connection and, and, and some awareness of what the other is doing and, and be able to like support each other. So how granular are you getting? How hands on and down and dirty you in there with the engineers who I imagine come up with all the, the flavor profiles and stuff or, you know, are, are working just like tirelessly on marketing campaigns? Just like how do you approach your work? Yeah, I mean, I'm actively involved. I'm not uh, passive at all. I mean, I'm involved in a lot of marketing strategies, sales strategies. I'll, I'll get out in the field. And, and as you mentioned, you saw those uh, a lot of great team members out there on the field marketing team that were out working, you know, at the, your gym location, uh, working with consumers. So I get out in the field. I get out in the sales field. I, I really work with the teams. And, um, you know, I'm the first one. Uh, if a truck loads up to the office, I'll, I'll get I'll be the first one to jump in and help out. And, uh, you know, I think it's important. You got to you really got to immerse yourself into the organization, sales, marketing, operations, finance. That's what really is our four pillars as we drive forward. We're building out more teams. We have a legal department now and uh, building out our HR teams as well. So um, learning, learn something new every day, right? You need a, uh, that's key. There's so much you can learn from uh, your team members. And we're bringing on really good talent now as well, with a lot of great knowledge. And uh, it's important. I mean, uh, you got to be hands on. I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it, this is, uh, you know, I'm the CEO of the company. I'm the chairman. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's important that you inspect what you expect. I tell our managers that. Um, not big on titles. Uh, you know, I don't think uh, that's not the way, uh, you know, I really operate. It's like best company. idea wins is, is yeah. always been my philosophy. Yeah. I mean, flavor ideas. We have a lot of different team members. We have cross-functional teams that come out with flavors. And, uh, 
uh, it's, you know, get everyone involved because each, this is our company as we're going forward as a group. And, and, uh, you know, we've come out with great concepts and flavors. We got some new flavors. We actually had an innovation meeting today that came through an individual uh, that was outside of the innovation team, uh, part of the cross-functional teams that came out with some really good flavor concepts and designs that the team's running with. So it's exciting to see that too, really see new people contributing and, and helping the company grow and scale. How important is sports uh, and fitness? Like one can just look at, at your marketing, your website, and like fitness is a huge piece. It's, it maybe is like the piece of what, how, how Celsius tries to set itself apart. You know, you got Red Bull is all over it and they got a racing team. They have all, we know like what they've done over the past few decades. Monster is kind of extreme, a lot of gaming adjacent type of stuff. Um, you all are like all about the fitness and I see people with their, you know, tech gear on the website and doing yoga and stretching and lifting weights and stuff. Um, and, and like, there are others, right? Like C4 is all about athlete performance and, and, uh, you know, your, your new partners at, at Pepsi, they had LeBron for the Mountain Dew energy. And like, it's not like sports is, is, uh, foreign to this space. But like clearly it is is the focal point of what you do. And then like you just announced that you're working with the Professional Fighters League and stuff like that. So like, you know, being that this is FOS, let's get into the sports component of of how you approach making Celsius yeah. successful. Absolutely. I mean, Celsius is Celsius live fit. That's our mantra. And that's inside, outside the gym. And then we bring that essential energy for life. So, you know, we're all about sports. We're all about fitness. We are all about living life to its fullest uh, and being active. And uh, everyone knows that's the that's the best way to live life, live healthier. We want to live longer. Uh, we do a lot with gyms from Barry's Boot Camp to 24 Hour to Gold's Gym. Uh, when you look at sports, you mentioned the PFL. That's a great new partnership for us. Uh, we also do a lot with surfing competitions. We do crossing with the cure, with paddle boarding. We do a variety of different programs um, as we go forward. And we do, we're involved with NASCAR. Uh, we have a, a great team so that we work with there. Um, you know, it's, it's really peak performance. Um, and the, you mentioned C4 and a variety of other brands. There's brands out there in that fitness space as well. Uh, we think we're differentiated, more of a lifestyle position. Uh, we have broader appeal. We have Nick Walker. That's a great bodybuilder, um, just a great athlete all the way around. We do a lot with Olympia and Arnold. So, um, you know, sports is key for us. Um, it's a, a key for everyone. It's key for, you know, living life to its fullest, staying active and staying healthy. You think that's enough to get you to the number one spot? You know, I, I think we're going to have to go broader in regards to um, that's where that live fit comes in. So fitness is going to bring us to a variety of different verticals. But then that live fit will allow us to go. As I mentioned, we launched an essential vibes tour. So that allows us to be a little bit more mainstream going into music festivals and concerts and hopefully hitting a broader consumer. Uh, but we do feel they you know, fitness and, and sports is, is a lifestyle and uh, it has broad mass appeal. Um, if you look at a variety of other brands out there, I mean, health and wellness is, is key to our core, especially post pandemic. Um, you know, it's extremely important that we stay active, stay healthy and you stay healthy and stay active with Celsius. Uh, you know, we'll help you drive that essential energy for your peak performance, your training, uh, you know, afternoon pickup. You talking about festivals? Um, I just had like a flashback. Shaq had this amazing like circus theme party during Super Bowl week uh, back in February, and yeah. you all were out there deep, like <laughs> lots of gorilla folks on the ground, like making sure everybody had a Celsius. <laughs> so I see you guys putting in the work, um, you know, and it's cool to see it pay off. People with big dreams can kind of see, you know, sometimes. You just got to put your head down, do the work. And, you know, next thing you know, you're a billion dollar company. What do you think of some of the like, uh, I guess you just put it like sad stories in this space or, or downfalls like the market penetration that that Bang has or appeared to have like I just always implicitly assume like they, they're like the biggest thing in the world. There's friggin 
50 flavors and they're they take up a whole kiosk every convenience store I go in and and now they're filing for bankruptcy <laughs> um what what happened there like what do you think of something like that happening in your market and and not really to I know you probably don't want to get in and try to disparage Bay unless you do you have the floor to do that but I just think I can speak to someone who's like an expert on this business how does something so so seemingly popular and just like well penetrated ultimately wind up in that the position that they're in yeah i mean bang's a great brand uh, to your point it had national distribution i believe it got up to over an eight share north of an eight share at its, uh, its peak in the category which is just awesome a uh, lot of great innovation a lot of great flavors you talk about 50 flavors they, they had some great innovation it was really capturing uh, a, a new consumer in the energy category. And it has allowed Celsius really the opportunity to expand in convenience. Really prior to Bang, uh, a lot of the, you know, Celsius has biotin and chromium. We have green tea. Uh, you know, that was not really seen in energy drinks prior. Um, and, uh, you know, Bang really opened up the eyes for really a lot of convenience buyers, you know, with their creatine they had, there was bringing in some supplement vitamins that were unique to traditional energy drinks. And I think that really, that really allowed the category to expand and open the eyes of buyers, uh, which gave us Celsius the opportunity to also compete in the broader energy drink category today. So, you know, it's, um, I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from, from Bang. And I think in regards to just any company in any business, you're never too big to fail, right? And it's, you uh, uh, I think that's really important. Um, I think there's a, uh, you can go on, on a variety of different companies, go back to the S and P 500. Um, I believe if you go back even, you know, five, 10 years and 20 years, the, the total list of those 500 companies, the top 25 has changed rapidly. So, um, you know, look at blockbuster over the years and a variety of different things. So each one has a unique case, but you're never too big to fail. And, um, you know, you really need to stay focused. Uh, continue to know your business, continue to really leverage your partners and, um, and, and watch out. You got to stay, got to keep your eye on it. Good advice. Um, I actually, I love everything that you said. The one thing about creatine, it, I feel like I saw a report or something recently about how that's like, is it not allowed or, or it's like false advertising or something because it's not water soluble or it doesn't do anything actually like they had to change the messaging about that. Um, I don't need to get super into it just because I don't remember the exact thing, but what it does is make me think about the supplements. Like, like that's a big part of what you all do. Um, Almost what's like the responsibility when you're dealing with caffeine? Like, like I have a friend who is a, a true like fanatic. <laughs> like I told him I was talking to the CEO of, of Celsius and he's like, you know, I could have sound like I was telling him I'm talking to Tom Brady. You know, he's like, tell him I love it and I use it. And because he's he's um he's a video editor and like makes movies and documentaries and stuff. So when he's in yeah. the editing booth for like 12 hours, like he truly does need a pick me up. Um, but even as a super fan, he was like, yo, don't, don't drink like more than two in a day. Like I've like learned the hard way. And I think that there is some like perception of potential danger. I mean, you have like the warning on the cans and like people shouldn't of a certain age shouldn't drink too much. And so like, what is that side of the business? How do you like prepare for potential you know, backlash for, for people who like, who get sick or who get something, some type of physical ailment. Like I'm, I don't know the, the, the true facts of it, but I imagine some people have probably in, in situations been like fatal. Like, I don't know if it's Celsius, but just like in general, like the energy market has had its, its troubles just like any. Um, and so like, what is that? Because like when I, for instance, when I talk to I had, when I talk to sports betting people, uh, I've had people like from that on the show, they, they have to talk about the responsibility of, of like dealing with gambling the fact that like people get wild addicted and like, how are they going to manage that in the industry? I don't think that energy drinks are quite like tobacco or gambling or some of these more sinister things, but there is a part of the game where you have to be like responsible for people's health and how their bodies respond 
and how does a company uh, approach that? Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, number one, we're a supplement, as you mentioned, and uh, that brings a lot of additional stringent requirements uh, that are by, uh, you know, the Food and Drug Administration that we have to adhere to. We do uh, testing prior to production, post-production, ingredients. There's additional scrutiny being a supplement versus a nutritional facts panel. Um, And, you know, we have over 2.7 grams of vitamins. Uh, We do have 200 milligrams of caffeine in our core line. Um, the daily recommended dosage is 400 milligrams. Um, and, uh, so that's why we limit it. And, and right on package, we say limited, you know, we don't rec- not recommend it more than two servings a day, uh, and not recommend it for anyone under the age of 18. I think, uh, you know, we, we acknowledge we do have caffeine in our product and we don't market to people under 18. I think that's, uh, important. And, um, you know, it's, uh, the, if you look at Starbucks, Starbucks tall has about 320 milligrams of caffeine in it. So, you know, there's products out there just like Starbucks in regards that, you know, do have some higher caffeine and caffeinated. And there's a variety of other products on the market that are higher caffeinated. So uh, we think 200 milligrams is the right amount um, that, that you get a, a really good elevation and experience with the product and a pride that enough energy without jitters and crash. And really, when you look at the vitamins, the chromium and bi- biotin, it allows the, the properties which differentiate Celsius. Uh, we are actually... If consuming Celsius prior to a fitness activity, you'll burn 100, 140 calories, additional calories by consuming the product and it increased your metabolic rate. So really helps with burning additional body fat. Uh, and that's all clinically proven by six clinical studies. So uh, backed by uh, Oklahoma University, that's uh, they completed the, the research and a gentleman by Jeff Stout, who's world renowned in the sports nutrition industry, um, completed those studies. So. Uh, and it's all validated and backed by science, which differentiates us. We stand by our claims. We stand by the, the amount of ingredients in the product. Uh, and it's an amazing product because of that. What is What was the turning point in this, like, decade-long journey? Like, you had mentioned a turnaround. And so, like, a lot of people didn't even hear about Celsius until the last few years, right? Like... So when I'm like, hey, this has been out since the early 2010s, like, like, what were the struggles? What, what did you see? You were there too, because you were CFO, like, like, ultimately, what was the struggle? How come all of a sudden you all are doing well, and we see it everywhere? Like, like, what was the turnaround? It's been uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears here with the team uh, working hard. It's all about the team, really, at the end of the day. But we, we really went to a drill deep approach. We focused on fitness. We focused on our given markets. We focused on South Florida and Tampa, uh, Dallas, and Southern California initially, um, and really just worked on building a daily consumer uh, within the fitness channel. And uh, we continue to stay focused on that today as we continue to grow and scale. But you know, it's the turnaround. When I look back, we've been growing this brand. If you go back and look at our sales history, you know, 30 to 40 percent uh, every year when you go back to 2013 and 14 and 15 and 16. But really, the turning point for us uh, was right around COVID. Uh, when you see what during that time when the lockdowns took place, uh, we stayed focused on, you know, staying true to our core, really helping out our all the personal trainers out there as well. We gave them a platform to build their communities on. Uh, and we, we really, I think that was a turning point for a lot of consumers looking for, you know, a healthier alternative, better for you and uh, staying active, which is, which is a key component to staying fit and staying healthy. I think that was a really big turning point for us. Also gaining distribution uh, with uh, some additional distributors in regards to Anheuser-Busch network. They did a great job for us as well. Those were our prior distributors. And they came on around that similar time and really made sure Celsius had that incremental space, which I talked about earlier, is getting that you know second and third placement in a retailer and getting off that shelf uh, and getting getting some more awareness uh, around some of the marketing programs that we were doing around these giving retailers. So I think the catalyst of health and wellness post COVID pandemic uh, and the change of consumer behavior is really looking for omni channel worlds shopping you know when you want it how you want it we're the number two energy drink brand on amazon uh, has been a big contributor as well so you mentioned south florida are you in boca raton right now yeah we're located uh the corporate headquarters down here in boca raton yep and obviously that's where you live 
Yeah. Yeah. I've been over here seven years now. Originally it was commuting from Tampa. Okay. So that's what I wanted to ask. Like, you know, especially I saw your CPA certification is in Florida. Like where did you grow up and, and, and what's like, have you, did you grow up in Florida or did you move there, you know, recently? Like where, what's your background? Yeah, I was born in upstate New York. I grew up in uh, north of Tampa. So uh, Wait, where, yeah. where in upstate though? Uh, Newburgh, New York, just a little bit uh, north of the city there, right by West Point. Okay, yeah, I know where and, that's at. Uh, I lived in I, New York for a long time, so pretty familiar with that. And wife is yeah, from Bear upstate, Mountain. so oh yeah, Bear yeah. Mountain. Yeah, you know what? I actually when we got out of Manhattan, once it was apparent that COVID was going to be a bit longer than like two weeks, uh, we stayed up in Warwick. Okay. Yeah, over in Orange County. So, I mean, I've been nice. through Bear Mountain like dozens and dozens of times. But yeah. when did you come down to Florida? Were you still a kid? Uh, I was young. I was young. I was uh, in uh, elementary school. So that's just where I was born. But really grew up north of Tampa um, in the Pam Tampa Bay area. And um, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's been Tampa's great. It's been growing like crazy uh, as well. And uh, as well as South Florida. I uh, went to USF. I graduated from the University of uh, South Florida over there in Tampa. And, Everybody's uh, moving over there. I, I see yeah, the, right. I see the real Tampa folks like stop moving here. My rent is going way up. Like, you know, you see it in the Texas, Phoenix, Tampa, Vegas, right? There's this whole movement. I'm still out here living in New York City and Los Angeles, like throwing my money away. Um, I understand why everyone's migrating. <laughs> How about Tampa too? You got Tampa Bay, you got Tom Brady now with the box and you got the, the lightning. So they've been, uh, they've been pretty hot lately. Exactly too. Well. All the sports teams crushing it. Like it, it's really yeah. fascinating. Um, as someone who's just like into almost like sociology and, and understanding why and how people are making the choices that they make. Um, I've really been like, wow, like Tampa is this hot spot. Like it's population is exploding and they're winning championships left and right. Um, That's right. It's probably exactly. pretty fun over there right now. I absolutely. I, it's a great time over there. Tampa's a great city, clear water, beautiful area. So you grow up in Tampa. What type of kid are you, you know, how do you wind up, being the CEO of Celsius, like, what did you want to do? What were you really into? Did you play sports yourself? Did you start a band? Like, like who, who was John Fildy, you know, for the past, however long before uh, Celsius? Yeah, I played uh, some baseball, you know, but, um, you know, in regards to who I am, I, you know, I, I've been working, I worked all the way through college, worked through, uh, uh, immediately out of college, uh, you know, working through as a staff accountant at a, a publishing company in Tampa. I got a lot of great knowledge from them on B2B publishing um, and, uh, you know, events and managing events. And um, I had an opportunity to work for a, a small public company in a biotech space that was some technology out of uh, UF University and with probiotic mints, which was on the early phase of, of gut probiotics as well. And I learned a lot there about public companies and um, helping launch really a new product, which was a probiotic mint into a variety of retailers around the country uh, prior to having the opportunity to come over to Celsius. So, um, you know, it's uh, always been a drive. So it may be a little bit unique from, uh, you know, your traditional CPA, as you mentioned. I've always been, uh, you know, a go getter, a hard worker. And, you know, you put in the effort, you put in the time. Uh, you continue to drive. You got to make every day, make every day a little bit better. Practice. Uh, I tell my kids, I got kids. I, you know, practice makes perfect, and uh, you know, continue to drive forward. Like, what's fun for you? Or, or are you giving me the impression that you're someone who's just like only ever focused on your job? Or, you know, I just like, like who, like, what do you do? Like, if you're, or are you just like a hundred percent Celsius? Like you got to make this company. Uh, we, got fun. we got cool events, uh, you know, in regards to when I, you know, I just, uh, you know, friends. Like when family. you think vacation, John, when you, when you yeah. say guys love you, you know, I'm dedicated. I'll probably be answering some emails on this vacation. But when you take it, where are you going and what are you doing? Like, what brings you joy in life outside of increasing the market share of Celsius? Yeah, 
uh, go to Savannah at, uh, go to Savannah, go to, you know, go head out to the beach. You gotta, you gotta relax. You gotta have fun with the family, uh, friends, um, you know, barbecues, barbecues are great. I'm a big barbecuer, just made some, uh, beef brisket on the house over the weekend. So that was absolutely amazing. So, um, you know, it's, uh, staying active. Uh, I run, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, I have a, a young son, you know, getting out and, uh, playing football with him and soccer. Um, we got the world cup going on right now. So big in the sports college sports as well. That sounds, sounds like a nice, well-rounded life. Well, putting all of that into perspective, um, I think you kind of like maybe implicitly said a lot about where Celsius is going and, and, and why you have to come in and do X, Y, Z each day to make that happen. Um, but just asking in a more pointed way, where is Celsius going? What is the next five years? What's the next decade? You've been here for a decade. You see how fast it can happen, how much things can change. And, yeah. um, and you know, honestly, like, more than the, the 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 sales pitch because of course you're you're gonna say we're gonna do better and make more and, and 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 all of that so i like i understand that part of it but more so like on the visionary level like what are you hoping to accomplish from like the public imagination like what do you want us to be because all the best brands are so much bigger than their product nike is an idea apple is an idea you know that's why we're so attached to those products and like what is Celsius's version of that? And like, with that in mind, what did the next five or 10 years look like? Yeah. I mean, the next five or 10 years, it's, uh, it, it, it's going to be fascinating. I think, you know, in regards to, you know, short-term, long-term expectations, uh, or they're extremely high. Uh, when you look at, we don't want to be just an energy drink. We want to be perceived as that, you know, to your point, we want to be seen, larger. We want to be a brand larger than life. Um, and when you look at a, the brands and, and especially in beverages, it's an extension of who you are, as you mentioned, Nike, right? So we, we want to be Celsius. Like, you know, you feel better carrying a Celsius, you know, you aspire to live that life. And that's, that's really what we're going for. I think that's really critical that we are bigger than, bigger than an energy drink, bigger than life. We want to build that a nostalgic brand. We want to be a global icon. That's really where we are going. That's where we created our, our global iconic C and Celsius Live Fit. We want to be a global iconic brand. Yeah, I think about like that's the reason that the Starbucks line is out the door at the airport, you know, when there's coffee in other places, like that feeling of what it means to carry that cup. I, I remember like playing sports growing up. I felt like I was in a commercial drinking a Gatorade, you know, I, I, it was something that connected on a different level and like, you know, best of luck. Cause I could see that, like, we're all, you know, we go to the gym and stuff. Like there is an element of what you're broadcasting with what you're drinking, what protein bar you hit. Like, it's like, it, you're, you're, you are saying something about yourself. Um, you know, you, certain people, they want to be seen with a Celsius. They want that. Like I always, I always thought it was interesting. And where I think you all really have the most potential is like you're seen as like the healthy option, right? Like, like that's what I've seen when I look around my gym or look at my peers. They're like, yeah, I don't drink that other crap. Like, you know, I wouldn't be caught dead with a monster, but you know what I mean? Celsius, I'll, I'll grab one. And so, um. I imagine you you're, you're going to double right? down on that. When you go to the gym, you want to be Celsius ready, right? You want to have the best workout. You want to get through that. You want your peak performance. I mean, uh, that's what we want. You want, we want you, when you go to the gym, when you do your activity, you do your routine, you do your sports exercise, your prep, we want you to be Celsius ready and, and, and get ready for the next podcast, have that Celsius, have a best podcast, be <laughs> your best, live life to the fullest. You are, you are a CEO through and through. <laughs> You gotta be, you gotta be, man. I, I appreciate it. I love your passion. Love uh, how proud you are. Your company It's it's always inspiring to, to talk to people who built something special and, um, get a little bit of insight into how that happened, where you're going. And I really thank you for your time. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. All right, John. Take care. That's a wrap on another episode of My Other Passion. I want to thank John for coming out, telling us all about his vision for Celsius. We'll be back next Wednesday with another guest winding down 2022. It's been a fun ride so far. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you soon.